They say you can't cruise without tunes, so today we're installing a custom auto sound slide bar radio into this beautiful 1957 Chevy. One of the problems we run into a lot with an older car when we're modifying it or building it from the ground up is often the radio. There aren't a lot of aftermarket options that look right and still provide modern functionality. We want to be able to use our car like a modern car, uh, use our phone to play our music, maybe some other MP3 player, uh, satellite radio, Bluetooth for phone calls. And that's been a big challenge for a long time. You just bought some sort of universal uh, single DIN radio and cut a big hole in your dash, and that doesn't look right. Fortunately, Custom Auto Sound has developed a new line of radios called the Slide Bar, which addresses these concerns. Each slide bar radio is designed specifically for the car that you're buying it for. That way it looks like the radio that would have come in your car. What slide bar means is the slide bar you used to use to switch between AM and FM on an older radio now flips a fake screen away to reveal the digital screen. Now this particular car is a 57 Chevy uh, and it's very nicely restored. Uh, just about everything on the car is just like the car was when it was made in 1957. So putting a modern radio in this thing that didn't look appropriate would be the wrong thing to do. One of the problems with putting a modern stereo in an old car is the frequency range of the speakers. Uh, when these cars were new, a lot of them had just a single speaker in the dash, maybe a single speaker in the back package tray, and the speaker was relatively small. The problem with a small speaker is it produces high-pitched sounds better than low-pitched sounds. Custom Auto Sound has also developed something they call the system, which comes with a pair of tweeters and a fully enclosed subwoofer and amplifier all in a compact unit. The benefits of this are the bullet speakers look pretty good in a lot of cars, especially a 57 Chevy because of the whole rocket ship and bullet theme going on with the car. And then the uh, subwoofer and amp is small enough that you can fit it under the front seat. The reason it's okay to put a subwoofer underneath the seat is because of how the human ear works. Uh, high frequencies are easy for us to detect where they're coming from. Low frequencies aren't. So when you put a subwoofer in a car, you aren't quite as limited on where you need it to be for the proper sound. The last part of the equation in a good sounding stereo system is your mid-range speakers. Uh, Custom Auto Sound also makes kick panel speakers for a lot of popular old cars, including this 57 Chevy. So between the tweeters, the kick panel speakers, and the subwoofer, we'll get a high dynamic range and a good sounding stereo system. The subwoofer and amplifier that comes in the system is very compact, and initially it doesn't look like it'll do much uh, because of how small it is. Once we got the subwoofer and the slide bar radio installed in the car and tuned, the uh, subwoofer actually provides pretty incredible bass for its size. As far as the electrical side of things, it was just a matter of cutting the old splices out. Uh, in this particular case, the car had a recent set of rear speakers installed, so we retained that wiring, and then obviously our powers and grounds would hook up to the new radio. Actually, removing the radio from the dash is pretty simple. Uh, you pull the knobs off, and you pull the bezels off, and behind the bezels are a couple little nuts on the shafts that hold the radio to the dash. Once you remove those, there's still a bracket on the back of the radio holding the back up. Just simply take the screw out of that, slide the radio out the bottom of the dash. Um, as far as the new slide bar head unit, it's the opposite of what you did to remove the old radio. You slide it up into the dash, install the nuts on the front shafts, install the bracket back in the back, uh, put your knobs and bezels back on the front, reconnect your original wiring, but now we've got a few other wires we've got to take care of for the satellite speakers and the amplifier. After I had made the power and ground connections and the rear speaker connections from the old radio, I turned my attention to the subwoofer. Now the subwoofer needs a dedicated battery source. So we run an, a heavy gauge wire provided with the system from the subwoofer up to the battery and install the inline fuse. We also run a heavy gauge ground wire from the system to a good ground point on the car. Uh, after you're done with that, you have to run a remote wire uh, from the uh, subwoofer up to the radio. That way when the radio turns on, it energizes a relay in the subwoofer so it turns on. The last of the wiring involves the RCA cables and the speaker wiring. Uh, the RCA cable is really simple. You just plug it into the output on the back of the slide bar, run it along your floor to the input on the subwoofer, and then the speaker wires you run from the outputs on the amplifier to the speakers that you intend to amplify. In this case, we ran it to the uh, kick panel speakers and the tweeters. 
After I was done with all the wiring, I turned the car on and made sure the system was working correctly. Once I was satisfied that I had sound coming from all the speakers in the subwoofer, I uh, reinstalled the glove box and the glove box door. After I installed the glove box, I pulled the USB, iPod, and auxiliary wires through and hid them inside so they'd be easy to use, but not apparent. I was honestly surprised at how the system sounded. Uh, the subwoofer is honestly small for how much bass it puts out. Since the subwoofer is so powerful, they give you a volume adjustment knob so you can turn it up and down as desired. Uh, the tweeters and kick panel speakers are very clear. The range of frequencies between the tweeters, the kick panel speakers, and the subwoofer will allow you to hit just about any note in any type of music you may want to play. All right, so what makes the slide bar radio so cool is it fits the car. You can see the bezel matches, these trim pieces behind the knobs match. So although the center isn't exactly what a 57 Chevy radio looks like, to most people they'd look in here and assume it is. Uh, and what slide bar means is this is the slide bar here and you see we have our fake AM band radio screen here. You slide that over and inside is the digital screen. Uh, you turn it on by pushing on this one. Uh, it tells you it's a custom auto sound radio. You got your basic no knobs for uh, volume on this side, tuning on the other side. Uh, the second knob back changes your bands and uh, your second knob back on the other side goes to your auxiliary and some of your settings, your clock, and then obviously you've got presets like any other radio across the bottom. You can see more about the 57 Chevy slide bar radio and the other models they cover at www.customautosound.com.